uh, in surgery or surgery. Uh, this disease condition is mostly seen in obese young female patients. What's the workout in case of non-female obese? Non-female, whether they're obese or not, and non-obese women, I think, have to be investigated very carefully to look for, first of all, venous sinus thrombosis as a potential cause of their increased ICP, and I will look for clotting disorders if there is evidence of a thrombosis being there. Other things could be inflammation in the CSF or infiltrative disorders, particularly in older men, we have seen some evidence of uh, infiltrative meningitis, a carcinomatous meningitis, things of this nature that will give us a pseudotumor cerebri syndrome. So it's very important to look carefully at the MRI to look for any structural abnormalities, abnormal enhancement of the dura or of the arachnoid, and to look very carefully at the CSF itself for the presence of any atypical cells, and then to take a very careful history with respect to drugs that we know that can cause this, vitamin A intake, tetracyclines, things along those lines. We'll be talking today about the treatment of pseudotumor cerebri, and I'd like to begin by just talking or introducing to you three different cases of patients who have this disease and to put in your mind three different approaches that might be needed for taking care of them. So the first case is a typical woman, 26 years old, headache and visual distortions that are worse in the morning. She has a BMI of 38. She gets transient visual obscurations with stars when she bends over and her vision is normal. She has no color vision deficit. She has no RAPD, only some enlargement of the blind spot on perimetry. And her fundus is shown to you here. You can see she has grade two papilledema bilaterally using the Frizen scale. This is one type of patient that we encounter who we have to treat. The second type is this patient, 18 years old, goes in for a routine eye exam, and she's referred for evaluation uh, because, not because of her amblyopia and strabismus, which are well documented, but because she has mild optic disc swelling bilaterally that you can see here. She has normal baseline visual function for her. She has no specific defects on perimetry. Now, the third type of patient is the one who's going to worry us a 20-year-old woman who has transient visual obscurations. Her visual acuity is not quite 20-20. She has a left relative afferent pupillary defect. Her perimetry shows some early field changes. And now you can see that she has significant papilledema. She has peripapillary hemorrhages, acute disc swelling. This is clearly more worrisome. So we have one patient who has primarily headache, one patient who is asymptomatic, and now a patient with vision loss. The first thing we have to do, of course, is establish that the patient has the right diagnosis of pseudotumor cerebri. But once we do that, what are we going to do next? What are our options for medical therapy? Surgical treatment, is weight loss going to be the answer for all of these patients?